Cheers, everybody, to welcome to the Coffee Pod. My name is Chishi Zed. Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. Woman shares her reason for divorcing her husband after nine years of marriage. Listen to this. Let me know if you think she has a valid reason or she was just looking for any reason because we know modern women love to break their marriage vows. I'm always in time. Let's get it. So the other day, I asked my husband of almost nine years for a divorce. It came as a pretty big surprise to him. We had just recently got out of, gotten out of marriage counseling and we were actually doing pretty well. The reason that I decided to make this video is because I have been thinking over the last 24 to 48 hours about why this came as a huge surprise to him and why it didn't feel like one to me. And I think that this is something that people run across a lot more frequently. Or I guess what I mean to say is at the very least, it just seems like there are some uh, problems in perspective and that ultimately led to the reason why I asked to separate. So I figured I would use a story from our past to demonstrate his perspective and my perspective and how neither one of us was seeing it the other person's way and how ultimately that is what caused the end of our marriage. So this story takes place at the very beginning of our relationship before we were even living together. Um, we had gone out, we were walking around downtown Pasadena in Southern California, and we popped into a sex shop. Now, I had shared with my husband that I was into corsetry at an amateur level. So we go into the shop, uh, they have corsets and a couple of other things, and we're just having fun browsing around. And of course, as it's going to happen, an associate approaches us and asks if there's anything that she can help with. And we tell her, no, we're just browsing. And in a gesture of just being friendly, uh, my husband brings up the fact that we had just been discussing corsetry and that I was into cor corsetry. And what a coincidence. So is she. So now I'm going to demonstrate what happens next from my husband's perspective and then what happens next from my perspective what happens next from my husband's perspective so the associate is now chatting with us and she is quite knowledgeable about corsets the three of us are engaged in a conversation for a little while but it just seems like i'm not speaking a whole lot i'll start to say something but then she'll start saying something and then i just back off and start shutting down and eventually something gets my attention and I walk away. From it. Of course, not wanting to be rude, still in the middle of a conversation, my partner is chatting with the associate and he's picking up on some great tips for me about corsets. Um, he's asking some really informative questions and he's picking up on some places where maybe I might want to go check out some corsets, take a look for myself, see if there's anything that I might like. Meanwhile, all this is happening, I'm just perusing the store, walking through, not paying any attention to either of them. After about a minute or two of this, he notices that I have been gone for a prolonged period of time and it's time to end the conversation. So he thanks her for her time, uh, takes down her information so that we can get in contact later in case we have any questions and comes to find me and I am feeling. So now the question he's going to be asking himself is why am I so mad? I demand that we leave the store. So we do. And when we get out onto the sidewalk, it occurs to him, the sales associate might've been a little bit too friendly. She might have been flirting and he has, as a result, not he, as a result, I am now jealous. And for him, this establishes forever for the rest of our relationship that I'm a jealous person. Now, this is the same interaction from my perspective. The associate comes to ask us if we need help. 
we engage in a conversation about corsetry. Not long after the conversation begins, I start to notice that the sales associate is placing her self between myself and my partner. When before we were standing in a tripod, she is getting incrementally closer to me and kind of closing that gap. I did notice that she was getting giggly. I will admit that I got jealous because, well, that's a little disrespectful. Um, it was when she put her hand on his shoulder uh, after he made a funny comment that I decided to go ahead and walk away. Now, don't get me wrong. I know for a fact that my partner is completely oblivious. He has no idea that this woman is flirting with him. He is genuinely having a conversation with her about corsets. But I am angry and I don't want to cause a scene. So I just take myself around the store and wait for him to show up. When he does, I ask to leave the store. He acquiesced to my request and off we go. And of course, as soon as we got onto the sidewalk, I finally clicked for him. Ding, she was flirting. This is where we diverge in perspective. I maintain that her physically cutting me out of the conversation, touching him, flirting with him, and then giving him her number in front of me was disrespectful to me. I give a pass to my partner because, well, he was just oblivious. It was when I brought it to his attention that it was disrespectful and unkind to me that I was dismissed, that I was behaving jealous in a jealous fashion, excuse me, that I was being threatened. And that should have been my first sign of the years to come about the lack of support I would receive about any time I would raise concerns. So I believe what it ultimately came down to was that in his opinion, whether or not he was being flirted with was irrelevant because he was my partner and I needed to be secure in the fact that he was going to always come home to me. And in that aspect, he's not wrong. However, you should never let somebody disrespect your partner, ever. Because that is a demonstration of disrespect inside of you. And once that seed had planted, I couldn't stop it from growing. That's my story. Nine years of happy marriage to the love of my life are now gone. Thanks for listening. All right, guys, what do you think of that? Let's check out some of these comments. First comment here says, do what brings you peace and protect it at all costs. I had a similar situation and left the marriage because he had no opposition until it began to happen to him. Sending you love. So do what brings you peace, protect yourself, be happy, same excuses. And it's so important that you make sure your chick, or if, if you're someone who's interested in, in marriage, does not think this way to lessen the chances of her being delusional. Here's another comment from a man who says, been married 35 years and I'm looking forward to my next 35. Somebody else here said, I'm not married, but been with my partner for five years i used to get really upset when he didn't see my side of things but i also had to understand sounds like she's telling her yo you need to chill another comment here says i've been with my man for almost 30 years i've had the same situations no human will ever understand you perfectly only god does so stop expecting him to read your mind and be god is what that sounds like another comment here says she took this too seriously i agree Here's somebody else who says, damn, all of this from one incident? Yeah. If a chick's looking for a reason to leave a marriage, she's going to leave a marriage. If a modern woman out here is looking for a reason to leave, she is going to leave. Here's another comment from a gentleman that says she's confusing surprised with ecstatic. <laughs> the guy is a free man again. Somebody else here says, you found out you're into chicks. Stop, yo. This dude says you found out you're into chicks. Stop all the other excuses. He's probably talking about her. Um, 
buzzed haircut there. That's funny. Listen, as always, guys, I'm curious to know, what do you think? Leave your comments down below. I appreciate you for checking out yet another episode of the Coffee Pod. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.